Hey gamers, this is Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire, and today I'm going to show you how to set up a game, your first game, of Mage Knight. So in my opinion, this is the best solo game of all time, but it's a bit of a bear to learn. So I'm going to be making a video series that is aimed at helping you get into this game as easily as possible. We're going to start with a tour of setup. So a full setup is going to look something like this, but I'm actually going to take it all down and put it all back out so you can see it step by step. The rulebook presents components in a different order, but I like to put things where it's visually easiest to build around it. So I actually recommend that you start with the fame track. So here's your fame and reputation board. And this is where you're going to track a lot of your leveling up throughout the game. I'm just going to move it up close to the top so that we can fit a bunch of other stuff into this screen. So the fame track is actually really simple. It looks like there's a lot of stuff on it, but actually this is just tracking your fame as it goes up. And then this is a reputation tracker. So your reputation will change depending on how you treat people in this game. So get rid of a marauding monster, reputation goes up. Burn down a monastery, reputation goes down. It's all actually pretty intuitive in the end, but for the start of the game, all you gotta do is set up the fame board. Then whatever character you're playing, you're gonna get two of their shields. So every character has their own pieces that you use to play. I've decided that I, the first thing I'm gonna film is just the initial first reconnaissance walkthrough version of the game because I think it's the easiest to teach. And I'm going to start with our boy Tovek because he is the guy on the box. So I'm going to take two of Tovek's shields. These have like a little round symbol like this. And I'm going to put one right here at zero on the reputation track. I've done anything yet, so my reputation is kind of neutral. And I'm going to put myself at zero fame because nobody knows who I am yet, but they will. So set up part one, done. Fame reputation track, it's out. Next, what you might want to put out is the day and night board. So this is just a nice little place to put it. It makes it easy to see everything. And it's the way I'm going to leave it for when I film a first walkthrough of this game. In Mage Knight, you have rounds that are divided between day and night. So you'll have a day round, follow it with a night round. So typically you start out during the day. We're going to talk about what all these different hexes mean later. We don't need to do that right now, but just set out the day board. That's a nice place to put it. Gives you something symmetrical to look at. I think that's a good thing. Then you're going to want to set out some cards. There are a whole bunch of different types of cards in Mage Knight, and while that might freak you out at first, trust me, it's actually fine. I'm going to show you how to distinguish between everything right now. So that if you've just gotten a box and you're opening it up, you know what you're looking at. So some of the cards we're not putting out at all right now. One type of card of that nature is artifacts. So these are artifacts. You're not going to get them anytime soon. So just find them, separate them from the other cards, put them out. They are basically kind of a gold color. They have a lighter text, a darker text representing different actions, and they have this nice little border right here. So if it has that kind of look at the bottom, no matter what the art is, you have an artifact. Shuffle them up and just put them up here. We may or may not worry too much about them depending on what we choose to do in the game. Boom, artifacts done. Next very distinct type of card in the game, these are wound cards. They look like they have blood on them. There are a lot of them. So you don't even need to shuffle them, they all look the same. Take your wound cards, put them face up right here. Next to the artifacts. Woo, got a whole bunch of cards taken care of. Next you're gonna think about your spells. The spells have a distinct look to them as well. So one thing that's a little tough about Mage Knight when you're getting used to it is that the backs of the cards all look the same. That's so that when you have them in your deck and you're shuffling them, you don't know what you're going to draw. But the fronts are very distinct. So a spell has a very obvious no art double text look to it. So it's going to have these two blocks of text, two color shadings, and then it'll have one colorful circle right here that represents the kind of mana you have to pay for it. And then a circle of that same color and a black mana, which you have to pay to do the most powerful version of the spell. So all spells are going to look like that. They're going to have that basic double text look with different mana costs. No problem. Shuffle them up, put them right here. So there's no reason to lay spells out just yet because in the walkthrough you don't until you discover your first place to get spells, which we'll talk about. But typically you'll have a market row with three spells tantalizingly on offer to you. So spells right here. Next is the group of cards that's the most difficult to visually distinguish from the others because they look a lot like just the base cards in your starting decks. And those are your advanced action cards. They'll basically have art, 
And then they'll have two effects, one that you can just play and one that you play for a mana cost. Mana cost is right there in the middle. So your regular cards look like this as well. However, the advanced actions are missing something that your starting deck won't be. And I'm going to show it to you right now. So I've already pulled out Tovax deck. So you have a card that's just like your hero card that you put in your play area. You have the starter cards for the hero that you picked. So let's flip them and have a look. See that familiar round shape in that top right corner? That's Tovax shield symbol. So that's how you know that these cards are Tovax starting deck. And they all have that shield up in the corner. It's very convenient, is it not? And then other heroes, such as Goldix, who I just pulled for the dummy deck because he's cool, will also have their shields up in the top right corner. So cards that are starter cards are readily distinguishable by that top corner. But as you can see, advanced cards do not have anything in the top right corner. And that's how you know that they're advanced actions. So go ahead and shuffle them up, pop them right up there at the top. And these are gonna become a market for you right away. So you pull the top three off. Ta-da, advanced market. There are a number of circumstances in which you can acquire advanced action cards, and we will be getting to those shortly. So in your full setup, you'll usually have a market of advanced actions, a market of spells, and then at the bottom, you're gonna have one more thing, and those are your unit cards. So since I'm doing the first reconnaissance walkthrough as my first scenario, we are not going to have any advanced units out yet, but I'm gonna show them to you just so you can see what they look like. So basic unit cards that you can hire will have this silver back. So they look silver on the back and then the advanced units are golden. So you can tell the difference visually by the back. That's because uh, your units never go in your hand. They have different backs than the other cards like the spells or the advanced actions because they're their own separate thing. Separate back, separate thing. You'll notice that wound cards do have the same back as the others because those do go into your hand and sometimes into your deck. Anyway, for our first walkthrough, we're only gonna use these basic silver units. So you shuffle them up. I already did it, so whatever. Pop them down right here. And then you're gonna lay out a market of three. Basically, it's always the number of players and then two more. So since I'm one player, it's gonna be me and then just two more things to pick from. And that's a basic setup of most of the cards for Mage Knight. There are a couple other things we have to get through because this is a honking big game. But if you can do this, you're just about ready to start playing. You're looking good. Other than the player cards, there are a few other types of cards. So when you open the box, you're going to find these tactic cards. There should be six for day, six for night. They have numbers and text on them. What you're going to do is you're going to just put them off to the side Always keep them off to the side because you always need them when you play. Just find a little place to tuck these. And then some other cards that are just good to have off to the side, but you're not going to play with them every turn. These cards with cities in the back. So these are very helpful for you. Some of them are city cards. So when you're looking for a city to defeat it, you have information about said city. But then others are going to tell you about different stuff that you can discover throughout the game. There's a ton of them and they're not all for any every scenario that you do. But every time you discover something like, say, a village. You might want to pull a village card to tell you what you can do in a village without digging back through the rule book. So that's convenient. So I'm going to have these. I'm going to show them to you, but I'm going to put them off to the side for now. Now I'm going to show you how to set up your actual map and player stuff. So consider this sort of like one half visually of what you're going to look at. Then I'm going to just move my camera back and forth to the map and player area and then back to here. All right, so let's have a chat about our map and our player stuff. The first thing you're ever gonna lay out on any map is the starting tile, and you know it's the starting tile because it's double-sided. None of the other ones are, so it's, a, it's visually obvious which one is the starting tile. The other thing that starting tiles do for you is they kind of define your coastline, so your map will have a different shape, be narrower or wider, depending on which side you choose. For the walkthrough, we're gonna have this very wedgy map, and you're gonna choose side A of the starting tile. See that A right there? That's how you know. So we're just gonna put it right here. And this map is just gonna kind of expand as the game goes by. We'll have to move things around, which is totally fine. The rest of your map is gonna be grown out through exploration. So you're going to have a bunch of other map tiles with different colored backs that you're going to put out. I'm gonna explain exactly how that works. Since we're just doing the first reconnaissance walkthrough for my first playthrough, I'm gonna set up for that. What that's gonna mean is that I'm gonna take tiles two through eight with the green backs, so these sort of 
countryside tiles. And again, if you want to know the number of a tile, just look right here in the corner. So we got number one right here. For a game with more players, you need more tiles, but for a solo game, you set up as if it's for two players, and so you only put out the first tiles, one through eight. For your first game, there's a walkthrough in the rule books that's designed to help you. So you don't actually have to shuffle the tiles the first time you play, just put them in order one through eight, where one is on the top of your stack and eight is on the bottom. And the walkthrough will guide you through everything, just like I'm about to do. So one through eight. So these are the countryside tiles. You also need to have some core tiles that I can go at the bottom of your deck. So basically you're just gonna create two stacks of these core tiles with the more golden backs. The ones with the cities are gonna go in one stack. The ones without the cities are gonna go in the other stack. You shuffle the cities up, grab one tile that's a city, and then you shuffle up the other stack and grab two tiles that aren't a city. Then, so one of these is a city, two of these are non-city tiles. You just shuffle them up together all over again and you put them on the bottom of the stack because the goal of your first mission is to find a city. So the setup for various scenarios is gonna be different, but you're gonna be working with these country tiles and these core tiles. What we'll do now is we'll put these down on the bottom. We'll put country tiles one through eight on the top. And that is our deck of tiles to draw for the map. There's only a little bit more to do to set up this map. We're gonna to take Tovac. We're gonna put him right here on the portal space. So this is where he starts. We're gonna start moving out onto the map. So tiles one and two are gonna come off and I'm gonna show you how to put those down. So we have tile number one. We're gonna put it lined up with this tile. The way that it's gonna work, I'll move them, is that you need the A and the one facing the same direction. And then see how there are little shapes in the corners, these sort of stars and circles, you're gonna match them up. So, tile number one is gonna fit like that. It's oriented the same way as the letter A on the starting tile, and you can see those shapes start to fill out together. So that'll all match. Nice. Put Tovek back. And then we'll draw the second one, and we're gonna put it here. So this is tile number two. We'll face it the same way. And then we'll fit it like so. I'll move it like this since it's gonna expand pretty evenly as we go. And the other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna need to put out our first tokens. So see these lovely swords right here? Those are marauding monsters. There are tokens in your game box to match everything. So in most setups, people will pile those tokens up above the board. I actually just play out of a tackle box because I think it's easier. Uh, some people play out of cloth bags, but there are a few different token types. We're gonna go through them as we play. But the first one is these marauding monsters. So I've just grabbed two. That matching sword on the back is gonna tell you that these sword tokens go on these sword spaces. Since it's daytime, we do get to see whoo, what's out there. And that's all we need to do with the map until we actually start to play next video. Just in case you wanna see, there are several different token types in the game. So mage towers will be purple and they'll have this purple back with a cool mage tower on it. Keeps are gray and have cool castle keeps on the back. So we'll be confronting some of these. Some of our adventures will take us into dungeons and ruins, which will have their own special kind of monsters in them. And then there are a few other tiles that I'll leave for later. The other thing we're gonna be setting up over here is our actual play area with our cards. So I've already told you I'm gonna to play Tovek. So I've got his card just sort of out over here. I've got Tovek's deck, which is shuffled. We'll just put it here for now. And there are a few other Tovek related game pieces that we need to put out. For whatever hero you wanna play, you need to make sure to find all of their tokens with their shield on the back. So these octagonal ones are basically level markers. You are gonna have six of them per character and one is just gonna start here because this is gonna represent how many units we can hire. The others are gonna be piled up in numerical order. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So you go up to 10. And this is actually gonna match the rows on the theme track that we set up at first. So your level tokens will just go here, that's fine. As you level up, tokens will come off of the top of this stack come over here to represent more units you can hire and your stats for how your armor is and how many cards you can hold are gonna go up. So leveling up does some cool stuff that we'll discuss.
The other thing of your heroes that you're going to want is their skill tokens. Skill tokens are rectangular, and they have some cool symbols in the back that we will discuss in detail at another time because we do not want to get into that right now. But these are sweet skills that you can pick up as you play. You're going to get a choice every time you do a level up that allows you to gain a skill. So you definitely want to have those out. That's all we got to do for Tovac right now. But since we're playing a solo game, there is one more deck we need to set up, and that's the dummy player. Thankfully for us, setting up a dummy player is super easy. You just grab another of the heroes, anyone you want. You grab their hero card, and you grab their starting deck. So all we're going to do is shuffle these up, and I'm going to move this off to the side. But basically to set up a dummy deck, you have the player card, the player's deck, and then you start with a certain number of crystals here. So for Goldix, so for Goldix, we've got three dots, green, green, blue. That means we're going to put two green crystals and one blue one on his card. And they're basically going to affect the timer as we draw cards off of his deck to keep us from dragging the round out for too long. It's very easy to run. No problem. You'll see. But yes, for starters, we're going to take some of these mana crystals and we're going to put two greens and one blue on Goldix's card. We are also going to grab Goldix's skill tokens, so he's not going to ever use them in the game because he's a dummy player, but we will because we're going to have an option eventually as we build our skill offer to take skills of his in addition to skills of our own. So at this point, you should pretty much have everything set up. You should have your fame tracker, all of your different types of cards, the starter of your map, your beginning play area, a dummy deck, a stack of tiles to explore. Make sure that those tactic cards I showed you earlier are at hand and make sure that your enemy tokens are sitting nearby ready to use. Again, I recommend putting them into little cloth bags or a tackle box, something that just kind of keeps them separated by type that you can draw from. The last thing that you're going to need that I'll show you how to use next video is a set of three mana dice. This is for a one player game, so it's one player and then two extra dice. There are more dice in the pool if you play with more people. But for now, that's a setup for the initial walkthrough of Mage Knight. Do all of this and you'll be prepared to play along with me in the next video in which we'll do the first reconnaissance, the introductory solo scenario for Mage Knight. Mm -hmm.